In 1950 the Mykoin Burevich, MiG-19, Design Bureau, also known as OKB-155, began work on a new fighter aircraft, intended to have a greater range than the existing MiG-15 and MiG-17 aircraft, and capable of reaching supersonic speeds in level flight. MiG chose to use two of the new Mikulin AM-5 axial jet engines, a scaled-down version of the Mikulin AM-3 that powered the Tupolev Tu-16 bomber, for its new fighter, 1-2, as a test bed for the new engine, OKB-155 was authorized on 20 April 1951 to convert one of the prototype MiG-17s, replacing the single Klimov VK-1 engine with two 19.60 kN. 4,410 lbf AM5s, later replaced by 21.08 kN, 4,740 lbf AM5 as, with the test bed, designated SM1 or I340, flying late in 1951, 1, 3, while the SM1 was a useful test bed, 2, its performance was less than expected and first resulted in an afterburner being designed for the AM-5, resulting in the AM-5F, reaching 26.45 kN, 5950 lbf, with reheat, dot, 4. While the SM-1 was a test bed, the SM-2, or I-360, was intended as the required supersonic escort fighter with work authorized on 10 August 1951. The SM-2 was a twin-engined, mid-winged aircraft. Its thin wings, which had been designed at TSAGI, the Soviet Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, for supersonic flight were swept back at an angle of 55 degrees and had a single wing fence on each side. Unusually, a T-tail was fitted. Armament was two Nudelmann N-37-37mm 37, 37 cannon located in the leading edge of the aircraft's wings, near the wing roots, the guns had been moved compared to those in the MiG-15 and Minus 17 to avoid ingestion of gun blast gases causing surging of the aircraft's engines, Two, the first SM-2, the SM-2-1 was sent to the Letnois Ledovatelsky Institute, EN, Flight Research Institute, LII, in April 1952 for testing and was flown for the first time on 24 May 1952, with test pilot G. A. Cedov at the aircraft's controls, 2, 5, with the UN reheated AM-5A engines, the SM-2 could not exceed the speed of sound in level flight, so reheated AM-5F engines were substituted, 5, while the new engines improved performance, the aircraft was found to have handling problems, particularly at high angles of attack, where the aircraft was prone to spinning. To solve these problems the aircraft's horizontal tail was lowered, with other changes including moving the aircraft's air brakes and deepening the wing fences, with the modifications causing the aircraft to be redesignated SM-2A and then SM-2B, 6, 7. The AM-5F still generated inadequate thrust and so the Mikulin Engine Design Bureau developed a new engine to replace it, the AM-9B, later redesigned the Tumansky Road 9, rated at 25.5 kN, 5,700 lbf, dry and 31.87 kN, 7,160 lbf, with reheat, 2, when fitted with the new engines. The SM-2B became the SM-9, first flying in this form on 5 January 1954. The SM-9's performance impressed the Soviet authorities, and it was ordered into production as the MiG-19 on 17 February 1954, despite the fact that factory testing had only just started, 8, 9, 10. The rush to get the MiG-19 into service resulted in initial production aircraft having a number of serious problems. The type suffered a number of in-flight explosions, eventually traced to poor insulation between the aircraft's engines and fuel tanks in the rear fuselage, overheating of these tanks could cause fuel explosions. This was eventually partly solved by fitting a metal heat shield between the engines and the tanks. 11. The aircraft's elevators proved ineffective at supersonic speeds, and an all-moving slab tail was tested by the second and third SM-9 prototypes, and later included in the major production type, the MiG-19S, which also featured an improved armament. 12. 
At the same time that the Daylight Escort fighter was developed from the SM-2 and SM-9 into the MiG-19 and MiG-19S, work went on in parallel to design and build a radar-equipped all-weather fighter with the first prototype SM-7-1 flying for the first time on 28 August 1954. This prototype had a similar airframe to the first SM-9, including the conventional fixed horizontal tail, with the second and third SM-7s introducing similar changes to those tested on the SM-9 prototypes, including the slap tail, 13. The all-weather fighter entered production as the MiG-19P in 1955. Major differences from the MiG-19S included RP-1 Izumrud radar in the aircraft's nose, with small radomes in the center and on the top lip of the air intake and an armament of two cannon in the aircraft's wing routes. 13. From 1957, production of all-weather fighters switched to the missile-equipped MiG-19PM, with an armament of 4K, 5M air-to-air -air missiles, with the cannon removed. 14. In 1955, following American introduction of high-altitude reconnaissance balloons and overflights by British Canberra aircraft, which could not be intercepted by existing aircraft, together with intelligent reports of the development of the Lockheed U-2 with an even greater ceiling, development began on a specialist high-altitude version of the MiG-19, the MiG-19SV which entered limited production. This had more powerful engines and was lightened, with seatback armor and one of the guns removed, while flap settings were adjusted to give greater lift at higher altitudes and a new pressure suit was introduced. These changes increased the aircraft ceiling from 17,500 meters 57,400 feet to 18,500 m 60,700 feet. Dot, 15, 16, 17, the prototype MiG-19SV was further modified, as the MiG-19SVK, with increased wingspan, giving a ceiling of 19,100 meters, 62,700 feet, but this was still inadequate to deal with the U-2, an effort was switched to adding rocket boosters, 18. Operational History Soviet Union Deliveries of the new fighter to the Soviet Air Forces, VVS, began in June 1955, with the type being publicly unveiled on 3 July that year, when 48 MiG-19s took part in a flypass during an airshow at Tushino Airfield, Moscow, 11. During their service with Soviet anti-air defense and in East Germany, MiG-19s were involved in multiple interceptions of Western reconnaissance aircraft. The first documented encounter with a Lockheed U-2 took place in the autumn of 1957. The MiG-19 pilot reported seeing the aircraft, but could not make up the 3,000 meters 9,800 feet difference in altitude. When Francis Gary Powers' U-2 was shot down in the 1960 incident, one pursuing MiG-19P was also hit by the salvo of S-75 Davina, NATO. SA-2 guideline missiles, killing the pilot Sergei Safranov, 19, in a highly controversial incident. On 1 July 1960, a MiG-19 shot down an RB-47H, S, N-53-4281, reconnaissance aircraft in international airspace over the Arctic Circle with four of the crew killed and two captured by the Soviets. They were released in 1961. In another incident, on 28 January 1964, a MiG-19 shot down a T-39 Sabre liner which had strayed into East German airspace while on a training mission. All three crew members were killed. East Asia China The first use and loss of a U.S. fighter to a MiG-19, J-6, was in 1965 when a USAF Lockheed F-104 starfighter piloted by Captain Philip E. Smith was attacked by a PLAAF aircraft over Hainan Island. His starfighter took cannon fire which damaged a portion of his wing and missile mount. Smith gave chase and did receive missile tone on the MiG but, within a millisecond of pressing his missile firing button, his starfighter lost all power. He ejected and was captured. Smith was held prisoner until released on 15 March 1973, due to improving U.S.-China relations following U.S. President Richard Nixon's visit to China in 1972, 20, 
2021.